I had a very productive weekend. Um, in that, I got to spend a lot of time with the kids, which is great. But I also got to build a keyboard. And what else? What else did we do? Stream some Warzone on Friday. That was a that was a interesting thing to do. <laughs> uh, there was one part that I clipped that uh, I was basically playing. And uh, it, the whole night was terrible. Like the whole night was just super sweaty games. We were losing left and right. I was playing with my brother and the one good game that we had, the one good game we had was right after I took a break. When I came back to, uh, to stream, I, I chatted for a little bit like this and then I started playing and somebody in the chat was like, does Ben know that we can't see the gameplay? And it just so happened to be the best game of the night. Like we were making plays and I was like, finally, you know, I'm not terrible at this. And uh, nobody could see it. <laughs> yeah. I clipped, I clipped uh, when, when I realized it. So if you want to watch that little uh, embarrassing moment, go for it. We missed the keyboard build. It turned out really well, actually. Yeah, uh, turn my desk off. And show you. Oh, what's up, AA? Here's the keyboard. It turned out awesome. Oh, Brian, it was you. Yeah. is a little dusty but yeah this is uh this is gmk botanical on a rylu studios hello nice thing is that it's got this like gold brass plate on the inside and so i have autofocus now on this camera which is great but also let's, let's flip it over here it's got that little gold plate on the back I'm stoked. Stoked. Wow, that looks nice. How loud is it? Um, actually, not that loud. Um, I have tactile switches on here, not clickies. So all you hear is the is the keycap hitting the plate. So my fingers are still torn up from the build. I uh, all that grossness from pushing switches in and soldering and stuff. It was fun though. It was really fun. When you get a new keyboard, you got to frame the old one. The old one, it's a little gross right now, but I can show you that too. Here's the old one. I just disassembled. I pulled all the, all the switches or the uh, keycaps off so far. So those are creams. And uh, I think I'm going to be repurposing this build and just having two keyboards on the desk for the two the two computers. I actually have three computers that I run, but this one, this cord here um, switches between two. I am using the shift key as the question key, which sucks, um, but I had to get arrows in here. So that's the way the cookie crumbled on that one. Um, I don't think that the that the board is designed to have arrows. I think it's like an option, but you know, being a designer, if I can't nudge things, you know, are you really a designer? So got to make some sacrifices, but it looks good. And only Brian would call that out. But we should have a couple of more keyboard builds coming. I know I've got two on the way and I've got one in the closet that I have not um, taken out yet. So we're going to get to work today in a, in a few minutes, but I also have a package that I can open. Hey, thanks for the follow. Um, what's up, Chalor? So let's do that. 
let's open this package. I think I know what this is, but uh, not 100% sure. It's definitely keyboard related. And let's see. So it's, this got lost in the mail actually. And the thing about like ordering things from keyboard stuff is, uh, or keyboard places is that a lot of times it's, they're group buys. And group buys mean that you kind of have to like wait. For the product to actually be made. And so here we are, you know, months or years down the, down the line. Oh, I know what this is. Yeah. Pretty pumped for that. That's it. Yeah. Just greetings and small talk so far. So this is a desk mat. So this is a kind of a cool run that I didn't participate in the full keycap set, but I was looking for some kind of like desk covering and I bought this. This was not sent. It's not a, it's not a sponsorship or anything. So let's see. So this one's from Dixie Mech, which is now Omnitype. See their new logo there. This is their redacted desk mat, which is pretty cool for electronics works and stuff like that. Yeah, that's pretty neat. Let's zoom out. Yeah, so I just wanted something to cover the walnut when I worked on keyboards and stuff like that. And this desk mat is going to be perfect. Probably won't live on the desk forever, but it's pretty rad. Redacted. Yeah. All right. So that, and then keycap. Anybody in the keyboard world, I, I think these are called artisans, but I'm not really sure. Because the artisan, it's not its not really an artisan because it's not made by a small creator. It's made by Rama, but these are usually pretty rad. This is going to be like an aluminum escape key. And it has also been redacted. Find it. Find it. Here it is. Pretty cool. I also have this one. This one's my favorite by far. I'm really kind of into like the secret society stuff. It's a little, uh, little eyeball, but that's old. Cool. Those will find their way onto, uh, onto keyboards eventually. Well, unboxing this morning with our coffee. Yep, GMK Redacted. That's the desk map. And then they also have like a full keycap set, um, which I wasn't really into. I, I ordered GMK, GMK Bleached, which is an all white keycap set. So um, didn't really need it. Yeah, so I'm stoked about that. All right, I think we should get to work, huh? What are you guys going to be working on um, if you choose to work during this screen? Put it in the chat. I'd love to see. I know Radis is working on some some spreadsheet stuff, so that's always fun. Uh, I've got some of that myself to do after the stream today. Oh, you didn't get the notification on Discord? Probably because I forgot to put it there. I gotta automate that stuff, otherwise I'm gonna forget. 
And Elizbo, what's going on? Good to see you. Also, belated happy Women's International Women's Day yesterday. Two goals today. I piqued your interest with templating further with wizardry. Nice. Yeah, I'm um I talked with Sang, who works with us at the future, and he's going to be looking into that as well. And we're probably gonna redo our entire site using that system. Um, because right now we have thousands of classes. Like you guys saw how long it took to publish, and we gotta fix that because we've got tons of collections, which is unavoidable. But I think that a big factor in this is that like we just have so many CSS classes built into this thing that we just got to do some reduction. So keep cleaning your notion. Okay, cool. Content moderation. Okay, nice. What's everybody else's goals? And while you're working on that, oh, it looks like I'm a little unstable here. There we go. Um, while you're working on that, typing that in the chat, I want to pose an idea for you. Um, tomorrow I need to start writing. So the thing is, is that like with, with writing, I can't really talk while I write. And so I, I had this idea. What if we did little like mini focus sprints in the stream? So we could do something like we take, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes. It's not gonna be a full focus sprint, like a full 90 minute focus sprint, but we could do 30 to 45 minutes inside the stream, turn the music up, maybe even put some copyrighted music on the channel for once um, and just take the hit. And then design, er, not design, and write together, because I'm gonna be writing case studies, I'm gonna be writing, you know, site copy. And then, you know, just share it on screen like I'm sharing the screen right now where we have the chat and stuff. Um, we put the timer on and then we go and then we kind of reconvene. So it's kind of like the way that video gamers do Twitch where they play the game and then they come back to chat and they talk. So, um, yeah, let me know what you think of that. Cause it's going to be pretty long stretches where I'm not going to be super engaged with you guys, but I, I think that like it could be a good idea. I don't know. But in order for this to work, like every single person in the chat is going to have to put a goal that they want to accomplish in that 30 minutes or 45 minutes. That's a, that's like accomplishable because it has to be like we got to go in on this together, you know, so. Yeah, so if if the if the stream is unstable, you guys let me know in the chat. Um, because what I'm going to do is probably reset my router and then come back. Um, that seemed to work the last time. Okay. So Doug Romancy, Doug Romancy. Ooh, that's the name. Uh, preparing posts for a new Instagram account I've been experimenting with. Nice. Zach's going to be working on an emergency web page mockups. Okay. That's a plan. I like the idea. Okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, I will be sharing my screen. Yeah, you guys can watch me type. It's cool. All right, let's try it because I feel like I feel like during that time during those little periods like if somebody new comes in they're gonna want to know what's going on so I think that like it's uh it's it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge for retention but I mean that's not the that's not the whole goal here you know well let's try it because I think that uh writing is is something that any designers struggle with and <laughs> we just got to do it. Yeah. It's like, it's like a, an accountability group for content creation. It'd be cool if everybody started writing something, do a blog post or something like that. Yeah. 
Walde, what's up? Just Burak, okay. Cool. So you know, Anna Lisboa is still working on payment method and really needs to get the check payment status function for this. Okay, cool. Some dev work, nice. Sling, thank you for the follow. Ahmed, thank you for the follow. Llama Bird, thank you for the follow. Oh my gosh, I've been neglecting our YouTube folks. Hold up, hold up. Let's see, uh, let's see if anybody's chatting over there. Uvindo, what's you gonna do? Um, I'm going to be working on a personal website over here. And that's it, that's all. So I think there's just like 14 or 15 people watching over on YouTube. I would love for you guys to join the chat. Orton, thank you for the follow. All right. I think it's time to get started, yeah? <laughs> uh, you hate daily accountability meetings. Makes you anxious. Oh, man. Yeah, this is not a, it's not a goal to, to make you anxious. It's just, hey, let's work together. Benedict, not too many guys here. Yeah. And we have more people on Twitch today, but, uh, yeah. Well, I miss you, man. When does the design system call drops? I don't know. What are you talking about? What to what are you referring? I know this is off topic, but I really like building a brand because you guys are making it. Oh, nice. Okay, cool. Yeah, building a brand was awesome. It was, um, it was, it, like I've said before, it's been my proudest, my proudest moment. It's the, it's the thing that I'm most proud of that we've created. And it was amazing uh, working with Matthew on that project. Dude is a legend. Yeah, really, really cool. All right, let's get to work. So I'm going to take the chat off the screen so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. And uh, today we're gonna be finishing up the creative research portion of the personal website. Um, we're gonna be going through some actual website, like some awards websites. And then uh, I'm gonna make some changes to the sitemap because I had a conversation with Matthew that, that led to some different insights. So that should be fun too. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that was the whole intent with building a brand so that you could like refine your own systems and processes. Um, Cause it was like, how do we balance entertainment but also some kind of education without me sitting here telling you what to do because that's it's always been my biggest hang up about making content is that like I hate using the word should it's like you should do this I'd rather say this is what I do good morning moon raid Horton what's up awesome getting to hang out likewise will I share the sitemap and documents like the design documents good yeah, I don't see why not. You probably won't have the typefaces because I'm going to be using like purchased typefaces, but uh, I don't see why not. Hmm. So I should note that um, this stream is not sponsored by Webflow, but the content that's going to be created from this is sponsored by Webflow. And um, one of the things that we're, we were thinking about doing is actually turning part of the site or um, you know, a section of the work that we do here on stream into a template that you guys can can purchase through the Webflow system. Um, so I'm, we're, we're still working on that, but uh, that might be something kind of cool. We'll see. Yeah. As far as Matthew goes, I, I, he's doing great. He's, he's still in the, um, he's, I, I was, I want to say he's still in the reflection mode, you know, he's still like 
formulating what he's what he's going to do and all this kind of stuff but uh you know he's going to be creating content that's that's what he's pursuing and so you guys can definitely have a, a you know good relationship with him and i think that the next the next site build that we do um if it's not one of my brother's websites it's going to be matthew's so we'll get to collab on that again and do that all live and make some content about it and all that kind of good stuff so Okay, cool. So some drops might pop when you get an alert. Otherwise, good. Gotcha. Okay, got it. Not router related. Hey, hey, let's connect on Discord later because I just learned about uh, bit rates and I need some help. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, Matthew's website should be really fun. Cause he's, he's an animation guy, you know, he knows all that kind of good stuff. So that, that would be really a really fun project. Atomic Kitty. Thank you for the follow. Horton. Thanks for the follow. Okay. We'll see you later. Chalor. Hmm. Whenever you're free. Hey, okay. Let's uh, switch screens here a little bit. There we go. It's time to get to work. I'm hoping you guys will be able to hear the keyboard in the background. I'm super proud of it. All right, um, what we've done on this project so far is we've created some wireframes and we're gonna tweak this stuff. So, I may end up going to the sketchbook um, into the design phase because like the wireframe is is solidly put together um, but I kind of want to experiment with like a 15 column grid and I also want to experiment with a five column grid so the, the best way that I've found to approach these things whenever I start down design is to start in the sketchbook because I find myself getting way too precious about pixels um and so i think that that's where we'll kind of start we'll kind of recreate some of these wireframes on paper and then just kind of move stuff around and and break stuff yeah exactly that's that's exactly why i have the top down camera and so we may get into that today depending on how the research goes um but we'll definitely get into it tomorrow and uh then we'll go from there I want the site to be unique, but I also want it to be usable. So kind of like a borderline, like a balance. Um, I, I, don't, I don't want it to, I mean, it'd be nice if it ended up on awards, but I don't think that that's like the ultimate goal. Um, so it's not going to like stretch the bounds of heuristics, but like I would like it to be somewhat unique. And um, in order to achieve that, you know, starting in the sketchbook is always best. Hey, Josh, any recommendations on what to look for in a monitor for web design or any particular brands or models to avoid? Yeah, people use BenQ. I use a LG Ultra Gear. It's a gaming monitor. Um, it's 38, A38. I also have a 27 inch Ultra Gear. I think as long as it's color accurate, um, you're good. I recommend using the actual devices for responsive design. So um, a lot of people are like, you don't want big screens when you're web designing. And I say, oh, <laughs> like <laughs> you can you can preview stuff uh, in XD at size. So you can see that kind of stuff. So um, I like the real estate. Asus Pro are, are very good. Yeah. I think the biggest thing um, is just you want to make sure that your monitor's um, color is uh, up to snuff. All right, so here's the research that we've done so far. We've we've pulled some inspiration on type, and when we look at this type, we've, we're basically going to go for some sort of sans serif grotesque. 
um, we, we have some ideas like sharp grotesque um, accidents grotesque which is one of my favorite fonts of all times and then this Swiss International um, is actually calling my name because it's got both a serif and a mono version um, as far as black letter goes like the whole thing is not going to be in black letter there's going to be no legible type set in black letter but I like it for elements so I'm actually going to like illustrative illustrative elements I'm gonna move this over here so on my current site I have everything like all the headings set in Hercules which is this typeface and I've been in love with this for a long time but I think it's time for me to move on Um, we may pull this in for more of like an accent because uh, Hercules if you if you set it in all caps and then increase the the um, tracking it's it's just sexy it is there's no way around it but I've also like been drawn towards this this drook or drook typeface um, because I've been a sucker for really super hyper condensed sans serif um, but also the, the wide version is really, really nice. So I don't know, we're gonna experiment with some things and see how it goes. But I was also pulling some inspiration between like with, with some of this stuff, it's the contrast between the type sizes is, I don't know, it's just, it's my siren song. It's just incredible. So those are the typography um, pieces that we've pulled for this site. Again, we're still in a very flexible position, um, but I feel like these are these are pretty spot on on the money, the options that I'm thinking of. I love the layered type here. You know, when I think about like, should I incorporate illustrations or you know all that kind of stuff, and I'm just not that guy. Like, I'm not an illustration guy, so I'm like. How can we use typography to fill the space and to communicate a certain vibe? Um, and I just absolutely love this piece. All right, so moving on, we've got color. Now this is not fleshed out yet, so we're gonna have to work on this a little bit. A um, couple things, really obsessed with like a, like a dark hunter-y Apple iPhone green. Um, so you can see that in the background here, but I'm also in love with like this pink kind of color So these two I think are gonna be two main ones and then as far as like a like a hyper accent color I love this orangey red and I love the way that they've combined this here so I Don't know. We'll see. I'm not I'm not a huge fan of this even though. It's very serene. It feels kind of peaceful like like the vibes that I'm going for on stream um but I've, I've stayed away from blues my entire career for personal brands, and, and I think I'm going to continue to do so. All right, and then uh, something that you guys didn't see is I started pulling examples for navigation, which is another thing that we're going to, uh, to talk about today. So as far as navigation goes, right now I'm wrestling between two things. The first is, should I have kind of like a hamburger navigation or should I throw just the links up top and um, you know I pulled some examples of both this is really creative I've never seen a stacked navigation on desktop like this and I actually really like it um, the one thing I like about this this page and I don't know who designed this but the there's a hamburger menu here right there's a hidden drawer but then there's also two menu items here and I like that because uh, it gives it surfaces you know the what you want to push and then kind of hides everything else that you, a user would need to navigate the site in a, in a mega menu or a hamburger menu so I like that and then of course my uh, my favorite agency right now born fight they've got a side nav it, it kind of takes over the entire page um, but it's everything's inside of their a hamburger menu the other the other thing that they do is they have a call to action button up here um, you, you can't see it but it's 
it's there on the site. So it's a nice way to, to emphasize a single link. But we're gonna we're gonna continue looking into navigation um, today because we got to flesh this out. Let's see what do you guys say in the chat um, on YouTube, Muhammad. Uh, what do you use for platform or tool to make your design into web pages? Um, so I design typically in XD or Figma. I like them both. They're both amazing. I tend to use XD more, um, but then, you know, I use Webflow to develop them. Travis, uh, how do you feel about hamburger menus on the left? I think it's unintuitive for mobile. Obviously like you'd, you'd have to switch it on top, um, instead of like a, like a left aligned because it's going to take up way too much space on uh, on a mobile screen. So I think what Born Fight does, which is the name of that agency, Barack, Born Fight is uh, they they move that hamburger menu up top so that when you, you know when you're on mobile, it's it's out of the way of the page content. Yeah. All right, moving along. So imagery. We're gonna have to flesh this one out today too. We're, I'm missing photos, like photo, pho, 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 photographic, photographic, photographic style. Um, Matthew had a really cool idea for my site map and uh, it involves some pictures of me and I'm gonna have to take those. I'm gonna have to figure those out. So that's, that's gonna be a challenge. Um, but you can see I'm I, I like these little badgy icons. I really like um, like this style of, of illustration. And then something that I've done for my personal brand for forever is like writing, like just handwriting, my handwriting. So um, you know, could pull some of those elements in there. And then if I do ever need illustration, this is the kind of style that I like, super flat, vector-based outlines. Um, I like this, this kind of like um, toy model instructions style. I think that's, that's pretty rad. So these are the kind of imagery elements that I'm gonna sprinkle through the site. Frenjo, uh, my tweets are popular <laughs> in Croatia. <laughs> Thanks for the kind words. Absolutely, man. I'm, I'm floored. Like it took me a while to discover Croatia's design scene, but you know, killing there. They're killing it over there. By the way, the uh, seltzer of the day is pomegranate dragon fruit. Good and gather. It's delicious. Okay. So the next thing is link button and f form field styling again this is something that we'll have to flesh out um i kind of know what i want but uh there's not an example of it like a text link here so you know i'm obsessed with this <laughs> this twitch thing, you know, it's like we've got this almost uh, three-dimensional extrude on hover. You can kind of see that on this button too. I just I love that So I kind of want to incorporate that on buttons and then as far as fields go I'm just gonna keep it super super simple something like this and I really like this style of, of text link where it's just text and an arrow I just want to keep it simple we, we should be able to do some cool stuff with like animations on hover with this kind of stuff. But um, again, the name of the game here is, is pretty simple. We need to get a sponsorship from Good and Gather. Yeah. Okay. So next up, what I, what I feel confident with is uh, all the stuff that we've gathered for layout and grid. Now, layout and grid and typography have a, a, a very, very uh, intimate relationship. But um, if we can take a look at some of these pieces, you know, 
I like the negative space around these. I love the way that, uh, you know, there's centered text, but then there's, you know, left aligned body text. I love the way that the, the space is used um, in the grid. I'm just a, just a huge fan. This kind of stuff we're, you know, looking at like multi-column grids, like the superhero cheesecake, epic, super epic. Um, They're out of Amsterdam. There you go. Um, but I've been a sucker for for this multi-column design in web, and it's it's something that like, unless you unless you you're looking at like a bootstrap build where it's like three column, four column, <laughs> two column, that kind of thing, you don't see text laid out like this um, in, in in web a lot. You do see it in stationary in like like print. Um, but this is the this is the vibe that we're going for. There's a lot of stuff by Born Fight in here, by the way. And uh Ervoye Grubashik, who is my hero. So you can see here's a 15 column grid. I'm kind of stoked to to play around with that. And uh I forget which what what kind of grid this is. I analyzed it before, but yeah, so this is the kind of layout and grids inspiration that I'm that I'm looking at. All looks super clean, exactly. That's that's the vibe. Just want to do super clean, and then maybe you know bring in the delight, do a little extra sprinkle with some of these um, graphic elements that we can create. And I, I kind of went, I kind of did similar things with my current site. Um, when I put up that page a couple years ago, where I just kind of sprinkled in some some type badges and stuff like that, but yeah, isn't that culture of a clout type just beautiful? <sighs> so good. All right, and then uh, mobile layout again, simple as the name of the game. So I found this uh, explore the moon piece. I think this was a. This was a, a Pinterest thing that I found. And I love the way that the, the type is laid out here. It's all one column, except when you get down to the nitty gritty details here. But I, I don't see content on my site ever looking like this. So um, just love the, the cleanness of it. I love the negative space around each, each element. Um, with this one, this one's great. It's a little pixelated at that at that size, but I love the way that we have a gallery here and um, the headline, I don't know, just the layout is, is it's speaking to me. Simple, it's clean. I like that menu. So yeah, that's what we got. Uh, that's what we got going on so far. What would you say the main difference between 12 and 15 column grids? I think, um, not being able to fully center something is going to be uh, really interesting. So like you can't have uh, like a half and half screen. So with a 15 column grid, it can't be divided by two. So it, it brings in, it like takes your sandbox that you can play in and makes it a little smaller and it forces you to be a little bit more creative. So. That's, that's why I'm excited about those kind of things. Five, 10, and 15 column grids, they always lead to really interesting layouts, in my opinion. Because 12, like, 12 column grids are great because they're so flexible, but they're also very predictable. Um, so you go, to the web, you go to a website using a 12 column grid and it's pretty instantly recognizable. Um, so that's it. All right. Um, so let's start taking a look here. I went real deep down a, an awards wormhole last night. So I've got two browsers full of tabs that we can check out. And I think that like, um, I haven't looked at any of these websites. I just pulled them up. So there might be some duplicates in there, um, but I just want to evaluate everyone and see if there's anything that like I can pull from to fill those, uh, those other boards, some inspiration. Hey, Ian. 
Kautik? Kautik? What do you guys think of Editor X in comparison to Webflow? I think Editor X uh, is really cool for, for WordPress, but it uh, has a reputation of being a little clunky. So I'm not sure. All right. Really like how clean this is. So notice how the type and the layout is super simple. You know, it's like a, what is this? Two thirds columns for images, one third for text. The magic really comes in the scroll animations. So like if we took a look at this site as designed, um, you know, when you're sitting there looking at it in XD, for me, I might be a little bored, but the the thing comes alive with this, with the animations. And it does it nicely because like, I don't feel like my scroll wheel is, has been stolen from me. You know, some of those scroll animations are just, they feel like you're you're not in control of your machine and I don't like that. But this one is really nice. I like their use of rules. The only thing I'm not really a fan of is this typeface. It's not too legible. Let's check out their menu. Okay, so it's a little pull-out drawer. Not really, this is not what I'm looking for for my personal site, but it's nice. So I fear, uh, don't change the scroll elasticity. Yeah, exactly. But a lot of a lot of sites on awards do, you know, and that's one of my biggest uh, just pain points there. Sell more with Split and Kingdom. Ooh, that right there is a great, um, maybe not positioning statement, but value offer. Oh, that's cool. So two things are happening here, which are really neat. Obviously, the image shows up on on hover, but also look at the look at what the text does. It's kind of cool. Hmm. I feel like I would, I would, I don't know. On my site, it would be gimmicky <laughs> to do something like this. So I'm not uh, I'm not taking any screenshots for a reason. I do like how they're using, oh, oh no, oh no, what's going on? That's not the screen, people. That is sight. Ooh. Um, what I was saying is I like how they use this as, uh, as slides, you know? So they're, each section is its own individual element. And if you notice that like right here, there's not much on the screen, but it's just tempting you to scroll down. So I kind of like that. So what I'm gonna do is take a screenshot of this. And the hope there is that I'm gonna remember to kind of give the, the information on the, on the page some room to breathe in between slides. I really like that. We'll see if I remember that. I'll tell you what, you guys remind me whenever we're laying things out. Yeah, that background change, super, super on trend right now, which I actually like because I'm really, really sick. Oh, that's why, look at that. Yikes. Enough messing around, keep scrolling. So I, I really like that um, because the the bands, the full width bands of colors, they're, they're, I think they've just been beaten to death. You know, when you're moving into a different section, it's I think it's nicer just to take over the whole browser. I do like the slider though, and now that we know how to do this in Webflow, <clears throat> you can be damn sure I'm bringing it into my uh, my personal site.
Oh, that was cool. What? Okay, so this is actually something that I'd be interested in. Notice how I don't like the way that it moves with the mouse, um, personally, for, for this project. But I love to have this massive, chunky text be kind of overlapped by images over time. So I'm going to take a screenshot of that. That's that's super, super cool. The type on this site is great too, by the way. All right, so let's check out the navigation. Okay, so it's, again, it's uh, one of those pull-out drawers, which I'm not really interested in. The other thing is that, like, I guess I guess you, you kind of need a, a side nav for this, but it almost seems like it's overkill. You wouldn't really need a nav with that few amount of uh, menu items. All right, let's move on. This is rad. Oh man, this is so good. What? This, this scene right here, or this composition right here, is singing to me. Contrast and type, using the space, beautiful. And they're not wasting time on any kind of like animations or anything like that, which I respect. Let's look on there, about page. I wonder what... Look at that, that's their paragraph class. And I think we have this typeface on our board, new house grotesque. And then let's see, size four VW is that. Okay, so they have a, they're using a system, a wizardry system where they lock the, the font size at a certain point. So it's 82 pixels there. That's bold. That's like super brave to, to size your paragraph type. 85 pixels or 82 pixels. That's super cool. If you ever want to look up uh, what typeface a site is using, it's really simple. There's plugins for this, but if you hit uh, Command Shift I on Windows or Command Option I on Windows in or on Mac in Chrome, you can bring up the inspector and you just hit this little icon here. And then you can click on any element in the page and it brings up the CSS. And right here under font family, unless they have some weird custom class types or, or um, variables set for their fonts, you can see what kind it is in house grotesque. So cool. Yeah, it is fixed at a certain width. So you can see it goes, you know, for viewport width uh, up to a specific size, which is 1920. So as soon as the, the browser hits 1920, it locks in at a pixel size, which is what we need to do on our site. Hey, Shay B. Franjo, you use what font? Okay, cool. And uh, I think somebody said Font Ninja or something. There's plugins, yeah. Let's 
Say what? F12? I don't have one of those. Mm -mm. Nope. All right, so this is great on type. I'm looking for navigation inspiration though, and this is pretty simple. So we'll leave it at that. Great site though, and pretty, very, very beautiful. All right, so Peter, what do we got going on here? We got a, we got a loading situation here. Oh, there we go. I almost bailed, guys. Currently living in France. Oh my God. That's incredible and creepy as hell. This is so funky. So, okay, when I'm when I'm talking about type contrast, like for me, this would be too far, too much contrast. This is just too small. It's legible though. It's not it's not a I don't think it's a UX issue. It's just for what I'm looking for. Whoo! In your face. You just broke your toe? My wife just broke her toe. How? You don't want to talk about it? She just held up a sign that said she just broke her toe. How? Oh, that is black. <laughs> she dropped something on her toe and it's, it's legit broken. I mean, what are you going to do for that? Nothing, right? Like... Oh, man. Yeah, you're just going to have to put your feet up today, I guess, huh? Shucks. <laughs> oh, man, that sucks. She'll be fine. It's just a tell. She's got nine other ones. No. <laughs> No, I, I think um, with toes, you can't really do much. You just kind of tape it up and, and that's it. So, yeah. But thank you. Yeah, yeah, it just hurts. It's it's literally black and blue. She, she dropped like a shampoo bottle on the toe. Tostitos, it's done. Broken. Walk it off. Oh, wait. <laughs> yeah, she's already laughing about it. So it's, it's, it's all right happens all right so that was that was a little too far in my uh in my opinion yep exactly yeah, it's already taped up she'll take some av avo yep. all right so nine to go and there's a whole nother browser full all right so we're looking for navigation, we're looking for photography style, and we're looking for link styling. Um, and then if we just see some layout that's just killer, we'll, we'll pull that. Thank you, I appreciate it. Should, should be all right. I'm not dismissive, but we've been here before. We've had several broken bones and broken toes in this family. broke my foot once on the job and uh was in a foot chase actually whoa was that me no it's not that guy's yeah um this is cool but there's no there's no navigation other than scroll so we're gonna we're gonna bail out of there so anyway i broke my foot while i was on the job and she babied me the whole time the whole healing process i was completely babied and then when i was out of my cast i was like enough is enough Get off your ass and get back to work. <laughs> so we've been through it. Real question, which toe? It's like, I guess it would be the ring toe? The, the one next to your pinky toe? All right, so you remember how I don't like scroll jacking and scroll, what, what'd you say, Zyphiric?
this site is doing it. It's taking the the acceleration and deceleration of my of my mouse and, and twisting it. And so it's like I, I can't even I can't even mm -mm. All right, but look at the menu. Well, that's kind of weird, isn't it? Yeah, we're bailing on this one. We're out. Anna Lisboa, you were ran ran over by a car? Oh my god. I wasn't here at the start of the stream. Where did you get all these websites? Um, I took a deep dive through awards.com, a w w w a r d s dot com, last night, and I just pulled up all the thumbnails or all the sites that looked interesting in the thumbnails. Um, I think I went back about three months. This is super clean, which I like, but I'm not pulling any. I'm, I'm, I'm not pulling any pieces that I can use on, on my site. Oftentimes too experimental for your taste. Yeah, absolutely. All right. So this is one that I actually did take a look at and it is Swiss and beautiful. And I love everything about it. I really like obviously the, the, hierarchy and type and the contrast between sizes but I also like the the simple animations for animating the rules or these lines in as you scroll it's it's really tight this stuff I'm not really a fan of um, when the when the text moves on scroll you the user can control when it stops but it's almost overwhelming especially if you have words like treosar literary expedition it's like really difficult to, to to, to read if it's moving. What do you guys think of like replacing someone's cursor? You see, it's like this arrow that, that grows and shrinks. Is that, you guys think that's cool or no, let me know. Yeah, I think I'm the same as you, Moon Raid. It's neat, um, but I'm not a fan. If it's, if it's, I, I don't want anything that I have set <laughs> to be changed. Like, don't, don't hijack anything. Um, Cause this right, right now, it like, just makes me want to bail because this is not my cursor. And also, if you notice, like way up there in the corner, I'm, scrolling out of it and so there's a there's a misalignment you see you see my mouse and the arrow they're in two different places so it's like yeah i'm not a fan it looks cool but i hate it no i'm just kidding mmm Don't make me learn how to use your website, yeah. Okay, so here's one with a circle. Um, I don't mind this as much, but again, it's it's almost distracting. Okay, so it says hold. What do we do here? Whoa. This is the same animation. Yes, yeah, same one. Just in case you wanted another angle of this guy. Creative developer based in Munich. This is almost overwhelming. Hold up. Getting the ruler out. The cap height on this, literally, that, that I'm looking at right now, is three and a half inches. I measured. Super, super cool. Almost overwhelming. Oh, but pretty tight though. 
Legibility suffers a little bit, but it looks good. I'm not seeing any navigation. Are you guys? Ooh, ooh. I like that underline effect. How do we, how do we capture that? I don't think we can, at least not in the next doc. So let's put this over here. Just add some text. Underline that slides off canvas and loops back on the other side. Just a sucker for that type see that that hover it's it's super on trend right now a lot of people are doing this um i don't know if i'm a fan oh man that's pretty it's just pretty without your glasses that serif typeface just disappeared for you yeah Yeah, I'm just, I don't know, man. I get it. It's cool. Um, it's cool to have. I, I wouldn't, I don't know if it's cool to use, you know? I think it might be cooler to load the image in this section, right? Like, I don't know. I don't want to tell this guy what to do. He's, he's obviously an awesome uh, developer based in Munich. Really pretty site though, for real. Okay, so um, I also found this site yesterday and I did click on this. I wanted to like stay fresh for you guys, but there's some that I just, I, yeah, I had to go. And I put out a tweet that like my brothers and sisters in Croatia are just killing the design scene right now. And uh, BN, I believe is in Croatia, right? Super nice. Anyway, I don't like their scroll jacking. You no, know, or not scroll jacking, but like scroll on um, mouse movement. But I really like their layouts here. There's a grid. I don't know what it is. But like this right here was just a great scene. Like this composition is fantastic. I think I pulled another piece from them. Let's see. But that, that scroll thing is killing me. Yeah, so I pulled another another piece because I really like the way that they did this two column layout. I'll show you guys. Paste this over here. But again, super clean, good type, funky grid. There's patterns here. See, we lost our place. That's the that's the bad thing about this. All right, new office. Year 2020. No, that wasn't it. Let's see, uh, studio maybe. Hey, good morning, delicious goat meal. Yeah, this is it right here. I like the way that they use two columns. I like that the uh, that the grid kind of scales and then resizes so that that side nav kind of sticks there. Um, like it would have been really easy to say, all right, put the meta over here and then align the text with this halfway marker, but they didn't do that. And I like that because it's just, it's, I don't know, it's super clean like it and then you got you know your two-thirds layout here yeah this is a it's a beautiful page 
Um, side nav. What do you guys think about this? Let me know in the chat. Cause I like it. I think it's, I think it's super creative, but I'm struggling with it because I don't know. It goes against, uh, normal site heuristics. Like users expect the menu to be at the top, but I think they do a good job here. Like I have no question that this is the menu, but it kind of makes me want to do this number. What does it look on mobile? Oh, well, let's see. We open up our dev tools, toggle our responsive design and see how it looks on mobile. So there it is. Yeah. So any, any kind of side nav on desktop is definitely going to go on the top on mobile because you just don't want to take any width away from the site content. Sure. Um, Oh, there's a little overflow there. I think it's probably because of this. So yeah, they go one column. Nice. It's clean. I like it. I also like that they, that they don't have a, a single background color. For like between pages. So like you notice like the home page is it's got a white background. You go to the studio, it's a back, it's a black background. I like the, uh, I mean, it's simple, but, um, I like that some pages have a different vibe. Cool. 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 I've, I've got two screenshots from this site. Great. Uh, great work. The end. Yeah, you like the side nav? It is pretty cool. It is. All right, so humans, let's take a look at their nav. So they've just got a drop down system. Super simple. Uh, not really what I'm looking for. How about links? Do they have links? Oh, there's some scroll jacking there. So I'm scrolling down and it's side scrolling. It's nice. Um, what? What? What do we got going on here? With this guy. Okay. It's a nice type. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. So nothing I want to pull from here, but cool idea. Okay, this is what this is one of the ones I I could not resist opening this one. Come on now, because this is just too cool. <laughs> this bugs the crap out of me, but the layout and the color is just man, I'm 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 a fan. So like I said, scroll effects. This is why it made awards side of the day. Um, but again, it kind of bugs the crap out of me with this. But as far as the layout goes, as far as the simplicity, the color, the palette is just awesome. And I know something that Greg teaches is with color, you want to look for contrast. And if you notice that like the background is pink, um, but it's a very, very dull pink and it's very desaturated, like a couple, a couple of steps down and it'd be like a, like a taupe or a gray. And then you've got this red, which is hyper saturated. Um, it's very, very vibrant. And that combo just makes it, makes it good. I don't know. Let's take a look at their about page. Okay. Less psyched about this page. Um, Whoa. Yeah, this is definitely a like because we can kind of thing. 
All right, so it's just a side scroll. Um, for you guys who are doing case studies, this case study is a great example of if a client found this and they looked at it and they're like, you know, um, I really enjoy the aesthetic, they'd probably send this person an email or this agency an email and say, hey, we'd love to work together. If they didn't like the aesthetic, they would immediately bail. And the reason is because there's no copy. There's no, there's no story here. And they're not talking about impact. They're not talking about the results that they, that they had for the client, like what the client was able to do with this thing, if it impacted their business in any way. Um, so this is a great example of, of the dangers of having a image only uh, portfolio. You, you want to you wanna make sure that you're communicating your, the value that the client found in you in your case studies. Okay, all right, this is, this is a little too much, but the color palette, whew, great. Oh, I know why I picked this one. Color. Mm. So the green is a little too light for me, but I like that loading screen a lot. Um, and then the other thing, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's like grain in the background. There's like a texture. And I really like that. So I'm going to grab a screenshot of this grain. Pull that into the, the color board. Color and texture, I should say. In sync with the new keyboard? Yeah, exactly. I told you I'm, I'm obsessed with this uh, the green vibes. I actually created... Um, when I was working on the style guide kit, I was kind of like playing, toying around with, um, you know, what what shades can I loop in for uh, for my personal brand? Nice page transitions on this too. It's like almost too long, but yeah, like a dark sage, yeah. Okay, so there is one thing that we can pull from here, and that is the imagery style. Like as far as as far as images on my site, I think I'm gonna go black and white for the majority of them. So I'm gonna pull this guy's picture here because I really like the photographic style. Hold on, there we go that in the images column there. Would it be trippy if like one of these people was watching the stream? All right, let's take a look at navigation. Oh, that's cool. Again, I, I think that like with this, it's like, do you really need a full screen nav? Probably not, but it's pretty. So, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Brian, for the shout out. Appreciate that. Um, what do I think about the resin artisans, the keycaps? Oh man, they're beautiful, yeah. Mm. See, that kind of stuff will get you banned, Ralph. So be careful, please. I'm going to time you out, and then uh, when you're done with the timeout, more than welcome back. All right. Um, what else? Do I have a way to a specific way to do research or do you save these websites in advance? Uh, it's a little bit of both. So I'll show you the next the next thing we're going to pull up is um, things that I've collected over the over the last like 12 months. And I keep them in my bookmarking system, which is called Toby. Here. So these are 
you know, things that I've collected for a while. But we'll do that next. All right, so let's see. Yeah, it's called Toby. Okay, so let's see. I what I was thinking when I picked this one. It's pretty, but I don't see it applying to this. Zach, you saw some walnut keycaps? Yeah. Those are, those are great. I actually have a few of those from back in the day. I don't, um, I don't know why I picked this one. I don't know. I'm not seeing anything I can pull from here. It's beautiful, but yeah. Moving on. The first video was fire. Yeah, the, the video was great. Okay, so I know exactly why I pulled this one. So grid layout sure um it's beautiful look at that type is just moving it's gonna make me seasick in a minute but like definitely makes you take a look um super compressed sans serif set in all caps is something that like you can never go wrong with so super great i'm gonna screenshot that nope what what's going on Sling, I appreciate that. All right. Um, projects. Okay, so when I think of this, when I see this kind of nav, it's nice. It's just, um, I don't know. I don't think I need to pull that. Let's go back. Oh, you know what that was, guys? That was a scroll jack. Oh, man. So all I did was I, 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 I scrolled down one notch on my mouse and it uh, it changes. It's cool. It's just not my style. I find that kind of irritating actually when insights do that. But take a look at this button. All right. So this is a this is a really interesting take of a button. The hover effect is awesome. I, I initially when I looked at this, I didn't think it was a button. I thought it was like more of like an accordion because um, it's got that little minus sign. Um, but that's pretty rad. I don't think I'm going to pull it, but I think it's worth a shout out. Does white text over peach background meet font contrast requirements? Um, I don't know. Somebody want to screenshot that and test it? This button, the distributors, pretty cool. Hover effect, it's nice. You got that line that kind of like disappears. You got the second thing that kind of folds up. Kind of neat. Yeah, it does seem a little light, um, but you never know until you test it. So you can't see the, <laughs> here, here, let me go. Let me go no video so you guys can actually see that. <laughs> Thank you for that. Not enough contrast for your eyes. Yeah. You know, accessibility is, is vital, but I think that like there, there's also a size requirement. So there's color contrast, but then there's also, um, color contrast at scale. So I'd be interested to see because these, these letters are massive. So if we, if we take a look at the, the type size of this, We're going to be able to see that. Oh, that's a straight up image. Oh, that's how they're doing that. It's text baked into an image. I think. Yep. Hmm. 
weird. All right, we're gonna bail, but uh, button, really, really neat. WCAG, yo. But I think I think it actually would need to be typed for those kind of plugins to work. Um, but you can take a screenshot of it and then actually use. I, I think it's called Contrast, um, which is a little Mac app that's made from. I think Matt Smith and a, and, a, and a buddy of his made it. Anyway, it's this super easy tool that you can select both colors and, and see. But I think that size has something to do with it. So I'd be curious to see if anybody knows in the chat like specifics on accessibility guidelines. All right, moving on. Ooh, that's cool. Okay, so here's an example of a menu that I actually really like. It's got, you know, the main navigation kind of exploded out and then it's got a hamburger menu for more stuff. Um, and I, I actually really, really like that. Not so stoked on the on the layout, at least for, for my site. Like it's it's a little too fun. I'm not that fun. Come on guys, I'm not that fun. But as far as the menu goes, I like it. <laughs> I need a custom giant bail keycap that closes the window. I just need something that that detects that scroll jacking stuff and just it's like warning. You're about to enter scroll scroll jacking zone. Let's go navigation here. Another site that did this really well is this rocks. So we are rocks.co. I think I have this somewhere, but if you guys can see this, this is their this is their uh, their heading on load. So you can see their logo on on this side, and then you can see the uh, navigation is is all. You know up top but as soon as you scroll your hamburger menu kind of folds in and this goes away and I really like that because there's nothing worse than trying to figure out how to <laughs> make sure that your menu is is visible on uh, on the site on page as you scroll so I, I actually really really like the way that they've handled that on a functional basis Is this an industrial design company? Dutch product design agency with a passion for mobility. We design product experiences that move people and businesses forward. Experiences. So yeah, it is product design. Nice type. Good color palette, just not my style. Okay, so here's an example of a mouse takeover that I actually like. So it's just one element and it gives you some instruction. So on our slider on the homepage that we just did for the future, like you can imagine some people are not going to scroll even though we've got that like that one piece that's hanging off the side here. The only, the only downside that I have on this is that it's not really responding to my mouse moves. Like there's easing in place, so it, like the acceleration is just different. So it's it's difficult for me to know where I'm landing. But that's one example of like a, a cursor takeover that I actually like. I just wish it was more in line with my mouse. All right, so Anna Lisboa. The other website does not have enough contrast. All right, hold on, let me, uh, imagecolor.com. So, yeah, she, she just texted it, or tested it. So it's a fail on both. Like I said, it's it's one of those things where you have to, to balance aesthetics versus accessibility. And if you're a web designer and your site is not accessible, that's gonna be an issue for you with uh, clients that know all that kind of good stuff. All right, so now we're working back. No, let's go over here. Okay, filling on that. 
How and How is a digital design agency using head and heart to build brave brands. What a great positioning statement. That's cool. Call it left right thinking. Nice type. Super simple. With a pull out drawer. Menu. Nice. How about links? Let's click on one of these guys. Yeah, uh, they just kept it simple. Very clean. Okay, all right, we're gonna bail on that. Loading. Oof. Oof. The background gradient or blur with the big old chunky type. My God, I like it. I also like that their, um, their, you know, their their type is kind of intermingled. It's nice. Look at that button. Oh snap! I've been looking for ways to integrate those badgy elements, and I think I just found kind of a cool way to do it. This is anti-accessible. This is just like. We're gonna do two point font and you're gonna deal with it. But I think there's a way to, to kind of like walk that line. I really like that. It's not gonna read as like a, a button right off the bat, but um, could be something fun to play with. So we'll put that in our button and linking board. The blurry color trend. I kind of like it. Yeah, I like it. Depends on, obviously, like, with trends, you know, it, it's, it's just going to depend on um, what the use case is and if it's the right call. For my stuff, it's not the right call, but I think it's, it's really pretty. I would almost want to see this as, like, an image because it looks... It, what I, what I thought on load, what I thought was gonna do is, as you scroll, the type would disappear and then you'd actually get to see what's behind the frosted glass, but didn't do that, so. Um, it's got another one of those you know, cursor takeover. This one's not that bad because the type is a lot bigger, but it can still be just a little annoying. I think that the point is that it keeps the, the layout clean while also, while also offering the user a preview of what's inside. Because if you have your case studies listed without an image, those people who are really after a specific aesthetic are going to have a hard time saying, oh yeah, let's pick Grana Coffee over El Muele. So I really like the font choices here. This, I don't, I don't know what you call this. It's almost like di didone. Um, this style. So this is not kind of in line with my brand, um, but I really like this typeface. So let's check out what this is. Oh, look at that. HK Grotesque. It's another Grotesque. I think the reason why I like to do a lot of... Uh, do compute it too. Um, HK Grotesque. A lot of research is to see those patterns. If you're drawn to a specific pattern, um, it's really easy to make those decisions because you're like, oh man, keep seeing this over and over and over. And uh, yeah. Zero dollars, what? Open source sans serif typeface. Hey, y'all, if you want a free grotesque that looks good as text type, this is one. Go for it, go forth. All right. Oh, I can 
continue down this path here. All right, here's the other thing that I really like is the, there's no buttons, there's these things. But as far as like a call to action button that's like a square or a pill or a rounded rectangle, it's like they've totally done away with that across the whole site. And I love that they've decided to do that. Like this is as close as they get, that little circular thing. But what they've done is they've got their sitemap, they've got other all their links here. And the way that they've prioritized the link is by just making it massive. I freaking love that. Um, it's a great way to, to draw attention to a call to action without, without uh, having it wrapped in a button. So that's gonna go in the, in the link thing. Yeah, and the contrast is pretty great. I've never been a fan of uh, like, I, I think that the one improvement that they could make is differentiating the header for the categories and the links. Like right now they're the same, the same like size and shape and all that kind of stuff. So I think that like some differentiation there would be, would be nice. Um, and then the size and shape and color similarities between this text and this text. Um, so I think that like a little massaging there and a little bit of, uh, of hierarchy would help, but yeah, it's pretty, it's really pretty. Next. Oh, I think we looked at this one before. Thanks, Zach. I appreciate that. Brian says, uh, you can take a screenshot of a heading you like and use what the font to analyze it to find the exact font or similar typefaces with the same style. Yeah. Uh, I've used what the font for years and it's been fairly reliable until you get into the differentiation between like, um, you know, sharp grotesque and founders grotesque. The differences are so subtle on a letter basis, but then when you look at the typeface as a whole, it's, a, it's very different. So I think um, what the font is is a great start, but I also, it's it, the reliability kind of comes into question. Okay, so we talked about this last time with the, the way that you're forced to navigate through the site, which you, it's kind of like a build your own adventure. And the scroll jacking is, is beautiful. Um, Animations are beautiful. Let's take a look at the main nav. Blah, the main nav. Pretty, very, very pretty. This is worth visiting on your own time just to see how they've done this kind of stuff. Um, it also crashed my computer <laughs> last time, so we're gonna bail. All right, remember MLK.com. Oh, this is cool. Yeah, this is really cool. Um, I'm not drawing a lot of inspiration on type, but what I am noticing is it's a story that you scroll through. And so one of the things that, um, one of the things that, that Matthew suggested when I talked to him, go to, go to just chatting here. So one of the, one of the things that Matthew suggested when I talked to him and interviewed him for this project was that if people are coming for my story, I should share my story on a, my story page. We should start a counter of how many times I said story but allow people to read through my journey and my career um, and, and the adventures that I've had in kind of a chronological 
order down the page. And he said you could do some really cool things with like scroll jacking and animations and, and image galleries that fold in. And then he was like, instead of making it your resume, uh, you could link out to, to your work from there so that it makes sense in the context of your journey. Because I was also curious, like, how do I put my work maybe in like, how do I, how do I display old work that may not be good, but is a vital part of my journey? Um, like, you know, I've, I've done really crappy jobs back in the day. And, uh, I think part of the, part of the things that like people are, part of the reason why people are drawn to my story is that like, I've just been through it. I've done crappy work. I've, I've kind of walked in, in their shoes for a while. And so I, I was, I was trying to figure out a way to display that work that may not be the best as a, as a, as a way to say like, Hey, everybody's got to start somewhere. Um, and this, this idea of having a my story page instead of an about me gives it that level of context that, um, that you'd need to explain with the shitty work inbound. <laughs> um, because if I had just like a, a, a page called work or my work, um, throwing a, a bad piece of work up there or a, or a project that could be greatly improved might give people the wrong impression. Um, so context is, is king in this. And I just love the idea of having a story because like how else are you going to talk about being a cop and a narcotics agent and a lifeguard and, you know, all the stupid things that I've done over the years um, in the context of being a designer. Yeah. So that's that. All right. Let's get back to it. Desktop. Creative direction on this one is top notch. Seriously, I, I'm 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 loving the site, and I really like the uh, the textures in the background. Love the the way that they've accented these words. Curious to see how they built that. Span of white paint background image that is amazing so they've created a class called white paint and whatever's inside this span so the span starts here and ends there it makes the makes the text a dark color puts an image behind it and then it kind of ends here that's really neat Nice subtle scroll effect there. Look at that. <laughs> cool. Really nicely done. Oi Tokyo, what's up? Uh, we're just finishing out the research for my personal project. So, or my personal website. Often do you find yourself trying to convince the client of these unique, more artistic directions? Um, it depends. You know, you can kind of tell if the client is going to go for something like this right from the beginning of the job. And I think that as designers, our job is, is not to be a proponent of our... Here, we'll go to, we'll go to just chatting here. Our job as designers is not to be a proponent of the our portfolio our job as designers is to create something that the client is looking for and that's going to work for the client's business or meet, help meet their goals in some way um, and I think a lot of designers will go in like oh, I want to do cool stuff I want to do cool work and that may not be in alignment with what the client is actually looking for so I think when you're working with clients your job is to unearth what they're actually looking for and try and try and help make them try and help them make it the best it can be versus trying to convince them to create a portfolio piece. If that makes sense. I don't want to throw you under the bus or anything. I'm just, that's, that's my two cents on that.
And then sometimes you just you just kind of want to like give him a surprise like Okay, this this scroll animation is great. So if you're working with a client and you're like, "You know what? Let me just let me just throw this in Webflow and do this scroll animation here." And they probably would be like, "I never would have thought that worked." And it was it's amazing. So, you can kind of sprinkle some surprise, a little bit, a little bit of surprise in there with working clients. Super simple nav, very simple links. Yeah, I think we're good, full site. Taylor getting married. I pulled this one because I like the overlapping elements. And then the way that things animate in are, it's just, it's classic. It's classic, it's classy. I like that. Look at that button, that's cool. Hey, hey, thanks for, for joining. We'll see you next time. Appreciate that. Yeah, shoot me the shoot me the message. Aesthetic is great. Navigation simple. Links are simple. That button is uh, is really cool. Yeah, it's nice. All right, we're working our way through here. Oh yeah, I was super stoked about this one. The thumbnail was really cool. All right, so a couple of things. You notice the background texture? I, I don't know if you guys can see it. You might need to, to head here on your computer, but it's got that grain. I'm really digging that. And I love that there's um, these characters in the back that are outlined that are kind of scrolling. You know, obviously this is parallax effect, but like, um, I love the layers and I love the different compositions that it creates as you scroll through. This is super nice. I'm gonna take a picture of this here. For color, texture, and layout. Pretty simple linking. Let's see about the nav. It's pretty simple as well. But the page layout, mm, really, really well done. But look at that little glowing one in the back there. That's great. Really nice, really, really nice. What typeface is this? This is one of those typefaces that like, let's see. I saw one thing down here. Nope, it's gone. Should have called it out when I saw it. I thought about it, but I was lost in thought. S C T O grotesque. It's nice. Cool. Really cool website. Page layout on that one was choice. Oh man, look at that. That rubber stamp effect goes straight to the feels. Straight to the feels.
This is really nice. Okay, so when we're talking about the My Story page, having a timeline like this would be really, really great. There's Yoda. I'm gonna take a picture of Yoda. Yeah. So one of the questions that like people ask, it's like, how do you gather research and find inspiration without finding a site that you just want to copy? And I think that the way that we're going about it is the right way because we're pulling pieces. Like there's nothing original at all. There's nothing original out there. Originality is created by combining two, you know, elements that, that haven't been combined before. Um, so I think that the way that we're going about research is the right way. We pull small elements from many, many different sources and we combine them to make something unique. Kind of get a, getting a Hamilton vibe from it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Horton, great minds, think alike. Picture take you must, that's right. <laughs> Right. Polestar. I don't know if you guys saw this, but uh, Polestar, I think it was Polestar, um, did a collab with Chris on his Instagram a while back. Um, we actually wound up going to some mansion in Hollywood Hills, I believe, and uh, hanging out for this event. And then Chris got to take a bunch of pictures with the new car and it was pretty rad. Nice nav. And that's about it. Savannah and Josh are getting married. Congrats, Savannah and Josh. It's kind of ballsy putting your your we're getting married site out there, especially with like an address on the internet. Isn't it? I don't think I would do that. I don't know. Looks gorgeous though. Okay, love and money. <sighs> love and money is always beta. Oh, I love that. All right, so notice the navigation. There's just one option. No. I don't even have any inboxes hooked up to this account. What are you? Get out of here. So it, it literally just opens up an email. But look at that type. Mmm. 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 We should crash the wedding. <laughs> so no nav and links. It's just a button symbol. I love that it reacts over here though. It's kind of cool. Brand agency that doesn't do pictures. What? That's cool. Why isn't there? Why? Where's the link? Okay, we gotta look that up. Imagine trying to tell clients we don't do pictures. Hey, it's a positioning statement. It's narrow. 
<laughs> I actually like that because uh, imagery is probably one of the... Uh, it must be a joke or something like that. Um, and one of the biggest hangups in site design is the imagery. And you guys will see me run full force into that wall pretty soon. Because the images, like type is one, or copy is one thing, but images really make the site. That's something we ran into with Hamilton too. Because when we asked for assets, Josh literally sent me an iCloud photo folder full of, full of uh, cell phone pictures. Like, oh God, we gotta, we gotta help them out. All right, so this one, this is kind of a fascinating example of a cursor jacking where they're revealing something. I wonder if we'll ever get to actually see it. An eyeball? I clicked on this because I really like the type, at least in the preview. Um, interesting use of rules here. No, not, I don't know. I don't know about it. It's unique. Like this header and this body text is interested. I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. No picture for you. All right, so this guy's got good type. I love the loading. I hate the scroll or the uh, cursor takeover here. Um, lead gen expert. Really nice. This type is hard to read. Are you guys noticing that? Like, maybe it's just the, no, even if I zoom out. It's quite difficult to read that expanded type. That Maybe it's like a size thing at this size. Like I'm lost right now. The thumbnail was great, but it's very difficult to read. Okay, so let's see. Links. Ooh, that's cool. How the arrow just shows up. Let's take a screenshot of that. See, I'm making myself little notes here and I'm noting animations, but I'm not being super specific with what they do because that's, that's the sandbox that we can play in. But just the idea of like an arrow showing up that wasn't there before and an underline animating can spark some, some interesting ideas down the road. Oh, this is that Rock Studios I, I showed you guys before. So you can see their nav up top is, um, oh man, I do not like that cursor takeover, but uh, you can see their nav up top is, is kind of like all out there. And then as soon as you scroll, it goes away and the hamburger folds in. Love that. I already have uh, screenshots of that. Type type. I opened this because their menu is beautiful. Look at that. I wish that the rest of the site had the same kind of vibe because that menu is just oof. oof.
Josh seems like a serious DIY kind of guy. Oh, he is. Yep, for sure. So we definitely went and take some took some photos for him. Where am I pulling all these inspiration examples from? This was a deep dive on um, awards.com. I did it. I pulled all of them last night and then uh, and then we're going through them together. It's a nice menu, just way too many options. It depends. I think some hierarchy would help. So like if we took uh, maybe fonts, custom fonts, trial fonts, services and licensing, maybe those are the top five. And then we make these more um, like smaller kind of like this might be better. Like it. So yeah, this is awards I stopped at page 21. <laughs> so it, it was a deep dive. All right, let's see. <clears throat> this is going to be a lot of duplicates because this was a search that I did the day before. Let's see, we've already done, let's say, Caroline Day. Yep, we've already done all of these. So I will take these out. And open these tabs. All right, so here's the here's the differentiation. The ones that we've gone through today are things that I just found. These are pieces that I've collected from over the years. Literally, this is uh, probably two years worth of like, ooh, that's nice, let me save that. And of course, Born Fight is the first one. Like, the grid on this site is awesome. The menu. See, here's the hierarchy that I was talking about. It's still a lot of options, but it's pretty clear where they, uh, you know, where they want you to go. I love awards too, and I also hate it. And I love it, and I hate it. So anyway. super clean super simple it's just one of those websites that I just I love to, to interact with um, like I've said before they're they're my favorite agency right now and they've done some great work Let's see so one thing that I thought was really cool is and one of the devs in in the chat can probably tell me how they do this, but check this out. Watch the hamburger icon here, and watch the button as you scroll onto a dark container. So the hamburger changes colors, right? But it's skipping, so let me see if I can turn this off. Do a smooth scroll. Okay, so it skips over, but check out the button. You notice that like, it's animating. Like the fill changes. Let's see if I can control that so we can stop it at a certain point. Look at that. Look at that button right there. The fill changes in between the two bands. And I have no idea how they're doing that. Like we could look it up in the code, but I probably wouldn't even understand that kind of stuff. But the it's so clean. Only bad thing is that like that looks pretty gnarly. But it's those small things that make such a huge difference, you know. JavaScript. Um, but the other thing that I that I pulled this site for is like the image animations as they um fold on screen so like let's see that one not so much those fade ins are really nice but like when we get down here these guys the the, the windowed reveal is super nice see that yeah I really like that style 
it's subtle. You don't really notice it until you draw your attention towards it, but yeah, that's great. Magic, magic, magic. Um, let's see. Links. It's just a underline that kind of fades away or that um, animates off screen. So that's kind of cool. I believe there are two buttons on top of each other with opposite styling, which makes one disappear on scrolling. Yeah, I think they have like some mask thing built in. The thing is, is that like, how, how, how does the mask move that precisely? <laughs> you know, like it, it, it aligns perfectly to the, uh, to the div under it. And getting that to detect, that's like, man, I don't know. I don't know. So we visited this one before, um, and I think I just like the use of space. Oh yeah, I pulled this a long time ago. This is Away, and they've changed the website since then. I've always loved their aesthetic, um, but they made the website, it's probably easier to use, but it's not as beautiful as it once was. So we'll get away from this. We'll get away from okay. farm design. If you guys don't know farm design, you need to because they do beautiful work. The website is a little bit too simple for what we're going for. Um, but the reason why I pulled this is because they have incredible ways to display their work in their portfolio. The mock-ups and the photography that they use are just incredible. So I highly recommend going in and taking a look at their site because their case studies are a little bit lacking on information, but the visuals are choice. Like, oof. All right, so Buck Mason, this was photography style. So I'm glad I landed on this because I'm gonna start pulling this stuff. So. I like the texture, I like the film grain. I also like their clothes. Yep. Okay, next. <gasps> 404 not found. Hmm. I don't know what that was, and I'm kind of over it. Oh, this firstborn. We got born fight. We got firstborn. Fight first. Maybe that should be our new agency name. Um. Okay. So the reason why I like this is their menu. Just simple, but super, uh, super dynamic. That's cool. <laughs> Not so hyped on the colors, but the way that menu opens is choice. 
And you notice the, the icon that animates? So good. Page transitions are cool too. And then the, the grid is really nice. Toy fight is another one. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, we did something like this on our site. This kind of yellow on the future site, this yellow hover effect. But that animate on, oh man, that was great. I'm definitely leaving that in my in my Toby. I remember this and I pulled it for color. So the the red here I really liked. It's kind of like a orangey vintagey red. Oh, this is a beautiful page layout. All right, so one of the things that I really like is uh, the way that their images and type kind of work together. Nice little slider here. Just pretty. Again, the multi-column type design is present here, but it's subtle, which is really, really nice. Boy Tokyo, please do. Oh, that's a bummer. See what I'm saying? I've collected these over the years, so they're not gonna they're not gonna all load. Okay, what did I like about this one? That's the only downside from like saving bookmarks is that like you can't make notes on it. I mean, it's nice. I just, what was the hook? Oh, maybe it was the menu. That menu load was, was pretty sweet. Yeah, that's what it was. I don't know. I nerd out about that stuff. As soon as I see one of those kind of things, I'm like, ooh, get all hot and bothered. Wait a minute, where's my nav? Here. Oh, this is a beautiful sight. I think we've created, we've captured stuff like this on our board already, but just to be safe, we can always trim this down. It's just super clean.
you know, when I started working for Chris, I, uh, I was a big fan of center type. And that was one of his rules. It's like, no center type. Ever. But I think I misunderstood him and I didn't like interpret that right in my brain. Um, because then I, w I literally was like, okay, never center type ever in the world. But there's a place for it. I like the way they use it here. This is too far. This needs to be tightened up a little bit, but. Whoa, that's funky. I don't like it, but it's cool. I don't like it for my thing, I should say. So carbonbeauty.com, right? <clears throat> Let's see. So what am I looking at? Oh, that's pretty. Nice scroll effects. So this is this comes from uh, Oi Tokyo. Oh, notice the uh, the overlay there. How the type changes colors. It's pretty rad. It's got to be a masking thing. These arrows are great. I just like it. Yeah, I don't know. The simpler things are what really get me excited. Holy menu. Who was it that was that was saying too many items in the menu? What do you think about this one? Oh my god. I don't even know how to act with this. Like, what do I do? It's beautiful. It's just wow. How do I, what? That's really pretty, dude. Yeah. Cool site. All right. So brianlovin.com was uh, not design related for inspiration. I liked the way that he spoke to the audience. Very simple straightforward it was not uh any like he carried zero ego with him um and i really like that okay we covered michael janda's site in the past you know what i really liked about this site is the hand-drawn elements, but also the way that the text animates on screen on desktop. And the type is beautiful too. It's very Swiss. Um, but yeah, look at, look at the hand-drawn elements here. You see that? You see like the charcoal thing here and then the underline. I love that because I mark stuff up just like this, you know, in my personal world, like I live and die by my notebooks. And so um, I think in the style guide kit, when I launched that, I did some hand drawn elements on those announcements. Like whenever I launch a product, I handle everything from the writing to the product design to the um, marketing design and all those kind of imagery. And so I was doing some hand-drawn like uh, arrows and stuff like that. I don't know. I just feel drawn to that. And I've done that on my YouTube channel too, where a lot of my titles are just my handwriting. I mean, look at that. That's so cool. I 
and I, I think it's cool contrast between the the type which is super clean very organized and then you've got those elements that's kind of rough around the edges um yeah big fan okay i'll stop talking about that <laughs> how's your toe You guys missed it earlier my wife broke her toe she dropped something on it and it's it's pretty rough she's got it taped up though all right manny asks do you build your sites mobile first or use any progressive enhancement strategies for these really cool designs i'm not sure what pr progressive enhancement strategies are um but i don't go mo mobile first i always go desktop um personal preference it's probably the wrong way to do it, but that's the way I do it. I just, I, I like having a larger canvas to start. And then I get to, I get to, I get to add stuff in the beginning and then take things away as we move to, to mobile. So a lot of these like, um, kind of graphic elements that, that show up on, on, uh, on my site are probably not going to show up on the mobile version just to, just to keep things friendlier. Um, but if you go the other way, like, I don't know that I would ever think to add them in at a later stage, so. Yeah, that's just my process. I, I usually start with desktop. All right, nav. Ooh. I like it. Cool, animation. Uh, we've seen this. Rotting Jackal brand kits. What was I thinking here? Oh, this is for Twitch. Yeah, we don't need to look at this. Like overlays and stuff. But I think I figured out how to, how to do stuff. All right. Um, oh, this one was awesome. All right, hold up. Let me let me refresh here. Let me get rid of this anchor link. All right. Now, take a deep breath and prepare for the awesomeness that is this website. Design-wise, I'm not like, like it's just not much I can pull, but just, it's just so cool. <laughs> Great design, no nonsense. I mean, come on, guys. That is so neat, right? And it's all, it's all attached to scroll and I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it's made in Webflow. Yep. Right there. There's the button. Look at that. So that's all, it's all scroll animations. <laughs> so cool. Yeah. He did such a good job on that. Um, I, I do like the background color changes. I know it's super on trend right now, but yeah. And look at the train thing. Maybe you should interview this guy. T-Rex hang, hanging out in the back end of uh, the caboose. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, cool. Oh, yeah, when we want to talk about Swiss design. <sighs> My God. It's so solemn that like, for me, I would need those kind of like handwritten scribbles elements to pull in, but like, this whole site is beautiful. Look at that menu. Matter of fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a screenshot of this because this is great. Sorry, I know there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot going on, but I like it.
all the UX people in the chat are screaming. It's too much. I like it, okay? Saved this for a reason. Mm, maybe it was because the menu was so subtle and you know, weird place. I don't know. We can, we can bail. Manny says, I'm having a really hard time liking Webflow because they don't allow mobile first or progressive enhancement. Oh, I see. Okay, so you're just talking about working the other way. So instead of uh, taking things away, like graceful degradation, um, you're actually enhancing it. So I think that like, it's just two, two groups of, uh, of theory. I think when you're designing something on desktop, you're also progressively enhancing it as you design um, because you start off with the core <laughs> you know the core goals and then you build from there um, so I think it's just two approaches and and I would hate to say like this is this is something uh, like it's a it's a right or wrong thing it's just it's just two different ways to approach design all right um, but yeah I could see where that would be frustrating for webflow because webflow literally has you start with desktop and then and then move towards um mobile y'all this right here is absolutely beautiful i don't even know how this is done but like just gorgeous So I think I saved this one because of the background color change and that beginning text animation. And then if you notice, we have the same animation on all the links. Are they SVG animations? Okay. I was kind of curious, but how does, how does this happen? Because we got the same transform and it's, it's really elegant. Let's take a look. Like if this were a, a text transform, I would be so surprised. So it's it's text, raise the flag. I'm looking for like a like a class change or something. I don't know. One of the devs in the chat, if you can let me know how this is done, I will absolutely love it. Shoot me a shoot me a DM on um on Discord or something because this is this is just gorgeous. It's so much more richer than just going to like, you know, bold on hover because you're actually transforming the type and the way that you can see it is right here. It's like Let's inspect this real quick. Well, where am I? Where's my mouse? Okay, so this is done in Simplice. Which is a WordPress, WordPress plugin. I don't know. I don't think I'm going to be able to find it. While keeping people interested. Um, SVG, yeah. Yep, there it is right there. Either way, it's cool. Maybe it's just they're tricking my eyes, but like this animation that matches the type animation. I mean, maybe that's just a text transform. I don't know. Let me know. Variable fonts. Yeah. 
that's what I was kind of thinking, but like, this is a weird variable font, like this black lettery style typeface. It's like, that'd be strange to find. Maybe it's custom. I don't know. It's cool. It's really cool though. I think we're about done. We just got a couple of more sites to go through and then and then we can we can call it a day. The um the main motivation was to find navigation, link, and color examples. I think we've done pretty much everything on that. Click Since anywhere to eighteen eighty. Uh oh Earth's global average temperature has risen by one point one degrees Celsius. How about that voiceover? Oh, you know what? I'll tell you what, what drew me to this, to this site. It's an amazing site. Obviously this is an award site. Um, but what I thought was cool was this was the first example of a scroll interaction that kind of unveiled an image like this that didn't annoy the crap out of me. Because I think that this is a great way to do, um, to give those previews. Like, let's say this was uh, a, a bunch of case studies or a portfolio or something like that. I think this is a great way to have a text layout that looks super clean. And then when you hover over this thing, a page, like a, an image loads in the background. So we've seen it on other sites where an image loads and it's attached to your cursor. And that's the thing that I find annoying, but I love this reveal. I think it's, I think it's great. <clears throat> and yeah, the page transitions are really nice on the site. Layouts incredible too. A little bit cluttered for, for what I'm going for, but, um, yeah, beautiful. See if I can take a screenshot of this because I think I was pulling this for like menu inspiration. That's cool. Yeah, it's, it is it is impressive that it's designed and developed by one person. Yeah. That uh, that last site, yeah. So this is the, the variable font, eh? Flextura. Oh. Oh, sorry. wait. That's what we're going for. Look at that. What? That's too cool. Enter is a variable weight. So you can, you can really refine how heavy you want the typeface to be. This. Whoa. Oh, that's super rad. Yep, I'm saving that. And just for you guys who um, are interested in Toby, this is how it works. You get your open tabs over here, scroll down to the collection that you want, and then you go, oop, and you just drag it in there. Now it's there forever. Good find, uh, Dave, Davey, Davies. Seal and Co. Cool menu, not what I'm going for. But why? But what are you supposed to do here? Why? It's cool, but like, for what reason? 
I also pulled it because of the color palette because I was really into this like tannish cream color background with the with the Americana red. Yeah, this is this is where like a designer was like, okay, now hold up now. What about circles? Just randomly. Circles. And then the creative director was like, yes. Love it. Like this is a button, so that makes sense. But I don't know. I don't know, man. Oh, this site is beautiful. All right, so there's noise in the background. You notice the noise, you see the noise. And it's moving, which I love. The imagery is just amazing. I'm sorry if you're a vegan. Um, But like, damn. Also the color. Yup, definitely taking a screenshot of this. Remember when I said, like, don't find a website that you definitely want to just copy? Uh... <laughs> uh... You done found one. Oh, look at that. That overlay? What? I can't believe that they were able to do this with an image of food and they overlaid it with like a, that green tone and the food still looks good. Normally when you when you mess with the, the color, the tone of a food photograph, disaster happens. Burns butchery incoming, yeah. Nope, can't do it. Can't even hunt. I don't have family or anything that hunts, but like, I just, I don't know, I couldn't do it. We're not vegan. We don't eat a lot of meat, but it's not, uh, it's just not something I can stomach, I think, I don't know. Which sucks because I really enjoy um, the sport of firearms. Look at the noise. The noise is great. The texture that it adds, it's, oh God. Can't take it, can't take it. It's too pretty. Timeline on the right. Horton, you're right. Crap. How do I... Hold up. You're absolutely right. I noticed that, and I was like, I gotta take a screenshot of that. And I didn't. And I regretted it. Thank you. That is super cool. And you know what's really neat is that it's a graph, and it's got this, like, this map texture, those lines. Um, it's almost like some of the things that we would see on military maps or um, schematics and stuff like that, which I'm super into. Oof, we're gonna be we're gonna be in danger when we go to design this. If we take too many screenshots of this site, <laughs> whoever designed the site, you did a great job. Menu, I mean. We gotta stop. We gotta stop looking at it because it's so pretty. Okay. Slight angle on the images. I don't know. I do fish. I, I really enjoy fishing. Um, Chris and I go to British Columbia to fish. We do salmon fishing. Um, but hunting is different. I don't know. 
I don't know. I've never, I've never tried it, but like, I just don't, I don't think I can do it. I don't know if you guys have seen this site. We were, we were looking at this when we were shopping for homes, um, but it's gorgeous. The reason why I pulled this is for the animations. Um, I really like those kind of like window reveals where the image is like the mask kind of moves down. I think, I'm not sure how they actually do that, but it should be easy to figure out. Sticky menu here that changes colors depending on the background. So it's got that cool, sticky neat thing. Theirs is a little less slick because it changes the whole thing, but. I think you guys know why I picked this one. Background noise, color, type, it all kind of lines up. Oh, I forgot about that. It was like a hunting horn. Like a like a fog horn. Whoa. I think it might have been the audio that I saved this in addition to, to everything else, but it's let's take a look here. You guys can hear that, right? Like so subtle and not subtle at the same time like it doesn't it doesn't hurt your ears subwoofer is blasting out air oh dang this is cool mm -mm -mm. I was super into the black and gold thing for a while and um, kind of phasing out of that just a little bit is that Mordor? <laughs> but I do like the colors. Hold up. I'm gonna be working with my, with my brother Sam to develop a soundscape for the for the Twitch and stuff like that, and I can see that as like a scene transition sound. One of the cool things um, we did some we did some uh, some research on our ancestry my grandfather did like he spent a decade looking into stuff and we found our family crest which has a hunting horn on it and um kind of reminds me of that this is a super cool site just everything is done so well the only thing i don't like is the uh is the cursor takeover we've talked about that already Like even those like bump sounds. Don't don't don't. Okay, I'll stop. Sorry. Oh, they changed their site since I saved them. I think I was going for their menu. Nope, it's changed. I mean, it's cool, but uh, this has been changed. The hover effect on these links is rad, though. What? Having the, the underline come up and animate in like this is super cool. dark gray tone in the in the light and then obviously they got the, the red that I'm after here <clears throat> with me bringing about the, the greens and pinks though this might be a then 1.0 color scheme we'll see that's not color Okay. 
Right. Oh, this is Basics website. This is um, the way that they do case studies is really nice. And what I was pulling from this is the background color change. Their type is cool, but it might be a little too hype beast for my for my brand. Um, but I really like the way that the background color transitioned throughout the entire site. They're a great agency, um, worth checking out. Why on earth would I save this? I mean, it's nice. Don't get me wrong. It's just. No. I don't know. The basic culture manual. So. This was shown to me two years ago, three years ago, and I fell in love with everything about it. We've taken screenshots of pretty much all of these elements that are used on different sites. So it's not uh, it's not something I'm gonna dissect, but the background texture, the typography, the handwritten elements, it's just good, 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 good. when I was saving for something else. Yeah. Italian Swiss style typeface. There's something wrong with the site. Oh man. Like the elements aren't aren't displaying. Hold on. Yeah. Okay, so accidents is the father of the grotesque fonts, which is kind of why I love it. So then we got universe. Okay, so now we're loading again. So this is kind of a history. It's a typography website, so they sell typefaces, but it's a history of this. And I liked the uh, I liked the scroll animations here, and the way that you know things animate on screen. So. We'll pull this back when it's time to go about that. And this this one was my favorite, where you, they're using the type as a mask for an image, and then when you when you scroll down, it, it kind of zooms into the into the image. Is the background color change on scroll easy to achieve in Webflow? It absolutely is. Yep. Yeah, you just want to have a trigger div, so it's like an invisible div that when it when it kind of scrolls on screen, it can trigger an animation that you know, changes the body background color or a container div or whatever. That's the way I've done it in the past. It's also a pretty font, like super pretty, but we'll pull, we'll pull this back. Um, when we're in animation mode and we already talked about this one. All right, guys, let's take a look at the XD doc. We've got this pretty much fleshed out. The only thing that is a little bit lacking is mobile, but I feel like we'll, we'll do that through the process of, of degradation as, uh, as someone put in the chat, who was that as Manny put in the chat. So we'll, we'll, we'll do that, um, in Webflow as we, as we go. Um, but I think, I think we're ready. I think that this is enough to start moving on some of the design. So the next step really is to tweak some of the wireframes to reflect the new flow. Um, and then we need to start writing. And the reason why I pause the design process and, and start writing is because if we're designing with just like lorem ipsum or something like that, we can make this whole layout that means nothing because we don't have the text to to accompany it. So what I want to do is like, this is, this is as far as we'll take the design process until we have most of the site written. That's what's going to be the next, 
next uh, phase. So, how are we feeling? Everyone make sure to get up and walk around for a second, stretch, drink water. We've been going hard for almost three hours now. Yeah, we're about to end this stream, so definitely do that when we get off. Um, Ahmed, you got to go? Well, thanks for joining. I really appreciate it. I, I appreciate all of you guys hanging out. Um, this has been just an incredible experiment for me, and uh, I really appreciate it. Ali, I, I, I missed your, your comment on YouTube. Um, what tool are we using for mood boards? We're using XD. Just gonna keep it all in one thing. Yep. Yeah. Let's see, who is Marcos? These kinds of animations are achievable on Webflow without coding. Yes, they are. And they're very easy. Once you know the tool. Emil says, great kids in front of the TV. <laughs> ben, did you research the same way for typography as well? I have trouble looking for what typeface to use in projects. Yes, and if you miss that, um, it's it's on YouTube as a recording video. So we pulled, we pulled this, um, just a whole bunch of type inspiration. And uh, I think we used fonts in use and then um, TypeWolf. And what's the other one, chat? Do you guys remember? The one that, uh, there was another, it wasn't fonts in use, it was something else. We used two of them. Um, but I knew I was going after a grotesque and I knew I was going to go after um, some like compressed and expanded sans serifs. So those two things are, are the things that we were actually looking for. But I kept coming up with the same stuff, like accidents grotesque is, is amazing, so. Ivan, how did you feel on some of those slanted photographs on one of the websites? I, I, I liked him. I don't know if it's for me. Um, but I've also seen like some hover effects where they load slanted and then when you hover it just kind of shifts gently to rotate. I think it's cool. It just depends on, on if it fits the brand that you're building for. With us, with, 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 with this site, you know, my personal brand, I don't know if it's the best fit, but yeah. How do you integrate web accessibility when putting together your websites? That's that's actually something that I need to learn more about. Um, we know about colors. <laughs> we know about uh, making sure that like all images have alt tags and and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's specific knowledge that I'm lacking. And we actually, for the last couple of sites that we've built, um, we're looking for a specialist to come in and kind of give us advice on that. So it's, 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 it's a whole, I know it's a whole, um, study and it's a deep well of things that I need to look up. It's not something I'm personally an expert in for sure. Fonts in the wild, boy, Tokyo nailed it. Yep. So fonts in the wild, uh, generated like the transposition image and the we can to feeling. I can show you that real quick. Hold up. Oop. Yeah, so this was fonts in the wild here. I realized I was talking about this screen and you guys couldn't see it. Sorry about that. But yeah, this is this is the way I research type. And what we'll do is we'll pull all these typefaces and put them on a board and just kind of test out different typefaces on different layouts. Varoom Media, thanks. Appreciate that. Thank you, sir. These creative adventures are always appreciated. Yeah, absolutely. These are these are fun. Um, it's part of the process that like isn't really sexy to put in a time lapse, so you don't see it a lot on YouTube. Um, but yeah, appreciate it. Lesso Entertainment or less Lesso Ent? Didn't want to interrupt during a research session. Not sure if you decided to use a song overlay. Oh yeah, I just haven't um, I haven't had a chance to like test it out and try it, but I'm definitely gonna loop it in because people do ask what's playing. Hey Stefan. All right guys, I think that's about it. Um, let's find somebody to raid. Sh 
shall we? So you guys on YouTube are not going to be able to come with us, but uh, for everyone else who is on Twitch, we're going to raid AAOA, who was in the chat just a little bit ago. So let's do that. Hold on one second. The community of designers on Twitch is small, but uh, it's tight. So if you're a designer and if you want to share your process, I highly recommend doing it on Twitch. I really would love to see the design community explode over there because we don't even have a design category yet and we need to. There's makers and crafting and there's art and there's just chatting, but we don't really fit into any of those. So I am on a campaign to get a design category. And I think that there are much better designers out there than I that would uh, just crush it. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing this community grow. But in the meantime, we're going to go visit AAOA. He typically works in Figma. And uh, I forget where he is in the world, but uh, show him some love. Do me a favor. If you if you like his content, follow him. And um, we will see you next time. Next stream is tomorrow at 1030. And we're going to be doing some writing sprints. So tune in and uh, we'll hang out. Thanks, everybody. I, I really uh, I really appreciate you, you, you joining um, every view. Uh, it means the world to me and I like hanging out and I like the I like the chat. So again, I appreciate it. All right. We'll see you tomorrow